Get ready, Central Georgia. This is Alex Habersham, publisher of the Macon Middle Georgia Black Pages. I'm happy to inform the community, particularly business owners, that we are working on a new edition of the Macon Middle Georgia Black Pages and Resource Guide. Coming soon. So call today. You need to be a part of this. Your resource guide to identify Black-owned businesses throughout Central Georgia. You either get your free listing and or your ad in the upcoming edition. We try to make it very easy through our book, electronic and digital formats, and social media. Reserve your ad space today. Call 478-464-0074. Visit our website at makingblackpages.com. You cannot afford not to advertise. Download the app. The new Making Middle Georgia Black Pages and Resource Guide is on the way. Coming soon. Oftentimes, I have the pleasure of interviewing somebody, a young lady, a young man, a seasoned lady, a seasoned man, uh, who has been intimately involved in the community in several different areas. And I'm so happy to have with us today on a call to action. And of course, I'm your host, Alex Habersham. I'm so happy to have with us today a young lady you know, who, who wears a lot of hats, you know, she, I think she thinks she Alex, you know, with everything that she's trying to do, being involved in just different facets of the community and trying to make a difference, making a difference in the community entrepreneurially, uh, civically, socially, uh, politically, and family. So I'm happy today to have with me Miss Panika Miller, who is, uh, though she might be in the Perry Warner Robins area, she's involved uh, in the entire Central Georgia area. And more than that, since she held a position with Black Voters Matter. And so uh, how you doing, Ms. Fanica? I am doing well, Mr. Habersham. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. And, you know, let's, let's, first of all, we're going to talk about all those different facets of what you're involved with. Let's, let's go with entrepreneurial at first. Although you got a new business starting in Warner Robins, and interestingly enough, they, all of your endeavors are kind of merged with uh, even your political endeavors and your civic endeavors, your non I forgot nonprofit uh your nonprofit endeavors, they all seem to be kind of geared toward uh, community improvement. So let's talk about that thing with the young ladies first. Talk about that. Uh, okay. Um, so the mentoring program. So you're, you're absolutely right. We, we work with nonprofit and now expanding into the for-profit space and politically. Um, I got my start with the nonprofit world in 2010 after running for office um, for the first time. Um, and there was uh, realizing that we only had one black woman in elected office in Houston County. Um, and to me, that was unacceptable. Um, as one who had been very active in community, organizing for well over two decades, I wanted to um, create space where black women and girls in particular could understand how policy affects their lives, um, give them the skills, the tools, and the resources that they need to um, take their seat at the table, at the decision-making table, and learn how to advocate for themselves. We put them in the rooms with their elected officials so that they can have the comfortability to do that. Okay, now, how old were these girls and, and what's the name of the organization? So the organization is New Vision MSK. Um, we work with adult women, several programs throughout the year for them um, and workshops on civic education and our girls program, which I, you know, I would put up against any girls organization in the entire state to say that my sister's keeper, um, Girls Midland High School is a heavy civic engagement curriculum 
for those girls um, in, in, uh, in addition to the soft skills and, you know, that they need in order to succeed in life. Talk about why uh, it's important. And I think that there's a vacuum in our community as it relates to civic and, and political. And I guess you could call political is civic. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit why it's important because there are a lot of parents out there who may have uh, girls or boys, you know, talk to them about the importance and the advantage of being civically involved. Yes. Um, well, I tell people all the time that politics, you may not be into politics, but politics is certainly into you. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm going to steal that one. <laughs> <laughs> It'll face you from the rooter to the tutor, you know, and you may steal that one as well. Everything from the snout of, of the pig to the tail of the pig and everything in between. When you are born, an elected official signs your birth certificate. And when you die, an elected official signs your death certificate. So it affects everything that we do. Um, and so, you know, that is how I begin the conversation with individuals. Sometimes I have to put away the clipboards and you know the political speak and just get to the heart of what are the issues that are concerning you and your community and help them to weave a circle and connect that to who are the local decision makers who are really affecting that issue for you. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's very, very outstanding. Well, since you talked about a politician signing your death certificate and your birth certificate. <laughs> Let's talk about your, that's a good segue, if you please, into your, uh, how did you get so involved? Well, talk about, you said the first time you ran, talk about what you vied for politically. Uh, I ran for a state representative here in Houston County. I got my start as a preteen back in the 1980s working to help elect um, the first black county commissioner here in Houston County, Mr. Houston Porter. My cousin was one of his campaign managers. Um, she would get me up on Saturday mornings, interrupting my cartoons to go <laughs> pass out flyers, <laughs> put flyers in mailboxes. And I don't know if you remember when the first computers came out, it was this huge green and white paper and it had the vote, it was the voter rolls. <clears throat> and one day she brought that to me and she said, I need you to make these phone calls. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if you do this and help us to elect Mr. Porter, this could really change our community. Um, wow. As a young woman, you know, both of my parents struggled with addiction, um, grew up, I went to eight elementary schools um, in my lifetime, you know, a lot of instability um, and, you know, experiencing things that we try to keep children now from having to experience um, in that uh, cycle of poverty. But I made those calls. I got up on Saturdays and dropped those flyers and Mr. Porter won. Um, and I was hooked. I did not understand the nuances of politics at that time, that it takes a while for change to happen. But I knew that I wanted to be a part and serve in that arena. Right. And so how were you? So you decided then that one day you were going to run for office. <laughs> I did not. I did not decide I was going to run for office, but I did decide that I wanted um, my peers um, and even my my adult parents to understand how politics affected their lives. And the more engaged I became back in 2007, running the Obama for America office here in Houston County, um, becoming the first black woman elected chair of the Houston County Democratic Committee um, and serving in that capacity. And you know that we're a very conservative community. And so we don't often have individuals running for office, particularly black women. But I just decided to stand in the gap. And sometimes you just have to be a spotlight candidate. If, if your elected officials are not um, being accountable to the communities and steering resources back, to the communities as we need them to be, then you have to call them to the table for it. And so that's what I did. And so what did you run for? I ran for state representative. Okay, you told yes. me that, yeah. Yes. yeah. I ran for state representative. Most of the issues um, that I'm passionate about are state level issues. 
health care, economic stability, educational opportunity. And although our local entities, um, you know, they distribute those resources, but the, the state delegation is at the table determining who gets what resources. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to be there. That's outstanding. So you just ran once? I run twice. Yes. <laughs> ran in, in the same position? I, well, yes. In 2010, I ran um, for state house. And then, of course, every since this year, those districts are redrawn. Um, in 2010, I received 47% of the vote. Then I'm I 47. Wow. Yes. As a first time candidate against a six term incumbent, I did. Um, and then the district was gerrymandered. And so it took us eight more years of massaging and constant engagement to get close enough um, to um, run again. And then in 2020, recruited a, a, a dynamic candidate to run for the same seat and just lost it by about a thousand votes. So we still have a lot of work to do um, on the ground. Yeah, I think that's a good segue into uh, talking about your, uh, you know, it was absolutely phenomenal, though, although this is a, not a political show. Um, so talk about Black voters matter. You know, mm -hmm. that's politics and, you know, but talk about your work with Black voters matter, the process of getting, because, you know, if, you know, guess what, Fanique? What? <laughs> it's kind of like, it's kind of like this vaccine. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of, I kind of compare, you know, registering and voting and a person's willingness to do that with getting a shot in your arm to, uh, to vaccinate against COVID. You got folk, you know, they kind of parallel, you know, you mm -hmm. got, I ain't gonna, you know, it ain't gonna make no difference. I ain't gonna take that. I'm gonna wait a while. You know, I don't know if they developed it too fast, you know, and then so, you know, it's, it just, it just, it, it baffles me to try to understand how things that will make a difference mm -hmm. that have been proven to make a difference. And then we still got people, I'll talk about the vaccine on another show, <laughs> but let's talk about registering and voting mm -hmm. and the kind of uphill battle uh, that was, and although it was not a hundred percent as it relates to increasing the number of registered voters. I think that, you know, your organization, Black Voters Matter, and what's her name? Uh, the founder, what's the founder's name? Natasha Brown and Cliff Albright. Yeah, I, I interviewed Cliff. Natasha mm -hmm. and Cliff did a phenomenal job. So talk about that process and what you were up against and what you did and, and how, what you think contributed to the ultimate success of it. Mm -hmm. Well, Black Voters Matter is a power building organization. Um, and I had my first introduction to the organization when they were just getting their start back in 2018. Um, they started traveling around the state and I was a candidate and an activist and they called and asked, you know, can you set up a community meeting in Warner Robins? And I was extremely honored to do that um, and happy because prior to that, we had not had an organization that was intentionally focused um, on making sure that the voices of black, mo black voters were heard and the issues that affect our communities were heard. They had just come off of the Doug Jones Senate race and were very successful in Alabama and wanted to duplicate those efforts here in Georgia. So that was my first introduction. I became a community partner with them through our nonprofit in 2018. In two, then last year, um, Wanda, who was the um, state director, called and she said, we need you on board. And it was I, I was honored to do that. I became the middle Georgia organizer. Um, so all of the central and middle Georgia counties, it was my job to identify partners, to organize them, to help them to build capacity to close those margins when it came to elections. Um, the other thing that I will share is as one who's been on the ground, I love the grassroots. I love knocking on doors and talking to voters. But sometimes it's hard to uh, convince voters to believe that that voting 
is going to affect their lives because when they walk outside their door, they don't see change happen. You know, they can walk outside their door and see abject poverty. They can see, you know, crumbling infrastructure, all of those things. And so, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes we do have to put the clipboard aside for voter registration and say, hey, let's, you know, forget all of that politics aside. What is the issue that is concerning to you? And it's bread and butter. It's economics. Our, our people want jobs. Our people want opportunity. We don't want handouts but we want the playing field to be level so that we can actually um, take advantage of the opportunities in front of us as well. Okay, so now how did you accomplish that? I mean, I mean, I know you were all over the place and just talk about some of the activities in which you were involved, getting people out to vote and getting them. Did you all deal at all with registration? We did voter registration. So for me, I, we started knocking doors in February in our community. We had the only boots on the ground uh, in Houston County, and I would say middle Georgia aside from some of our partners. We started engaging people earlier. That is one core belief with Black Voters Matter. We are not extractive. We know that we can't turn our people out or convince them to turn out two weeks before the election. We have to start having those conversations early. And then COVID hit. You know, we were sidelined for a while, but in August, we ramped back up. We invested in a fleet of buses, baby buses that were wrapped, and we took those buses all across the state. I think I went to just about every county in central Georgia, um, up down to southwest Georgia, south Georgia, and over to the, to the coast as well, just talking to voters, talking to our partners, being visible. Sometimes it's, it's more about visibility going to communities uh, with a bus that says love and power and that you matter and showing people that you do have a voice and that we want to listen to you and the issues that are concerning you. And if that concerns you, then this is how you build power around that. You have to engage in the process. Oh, that's, that's so outstanding. Well, uh, you know, as a citizen <laughs> and as one who's very, very interested in the community, as one who believes that, you know, we can affect change in a positive manner. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have to be violent and, you know, and disruptive. I mean, there's a process mm -hmm. that we can use to make a difference and to see change. So knowing all of that and being maybe two years older than you, <laughs> I, I just want to, you know, in a sense, I express my appreciation to you. And there are other areas in which you've been involved, but particularly, you know, in, you know, having seen you, you know, work on, you know, getting people out to vote in the last election for, for Warnock and Ossoff. And now that the election is over, we're not being necessarily political, but I think that their election is reflective, if you please, of uh, the work that somebody did. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You know, and yeah, and I'm sure that you were involved in that. Talk a little bit specifically about, you know, some of the activities that were centered around the Warnock Ossoff campaign in mm -hmm. which you were involved. So Black Voters Matter on that C3 side is totally nonpartisan and we're issues based. But another hat that I wear is I am the, I serve as the eighth congressional district chair for the Democratic Party of Georgia. So it is my job to organize from Forsyth to the Georgia Florida line, making sure that our county parties have the resources and infrastructure. So a coordinated effort, <clears throat> all of those things to get even our county parties on, on board, making sure that um, the candidates showed up and were visible everywhere. Black voters in particular um, showed up at 29% in the general election and 32% in the runoff election. That is uh, you know, unheard of when it comes to runoff elections. We were able to flip Baldwin County and Washington County from red to blue and close margins everywhere across the state. 
That is the work of people on the ground, whether they work with organizations that do C3 nonpartisan work or whether they are deeply embedded into political organizing. Yeah, that's outstanding. Well, congratulations again. And I'm glad you did that. So now let's talk a little bit about your entrepreneurial spirit. <laughs> Talk about your entrepreneurial involvement. How long have you been involved in that element? What have you done? And then you can move into your special project that you very recently mm -hmm. accomplished and that you recently accomplished. I want to talk about your involvement with the Black Pages, but I'll do that in a minute. Okay. <laughs> well, believe it or not, this is... Um my very first forte in the for-profit space. But what I realized in from nonprofit work and from convening Black Women and Girls Day and even in the political realm, that all the nonprofits in the world are not going alone, are not going to be able to move the needle when it comes to economic opportunity for Black people. Right. So it, there was a natural progression and a shift. Um, although I didn't have to and you don't need to, um, I went back to school and um, received my MBA, um, and then I became began volunteering with uh, SCORE Middle Georgia. Um, I was uh, I joined um, or was nominated to serve on the Warner Robins Economic Development Authority, um, and also with my partner uh, out in these streets, Sharanda Bryant Ivy we formed the Minority Business League here to connect, oh, to connect, uh, you know, entrepreneurs of color to resources and information that we typically do not receive from traditional chambers of commerce. So that's how I got my start back in 2017, um, which has led to us now preparing to open Succeed Cowork. Talk about Succeed Cowork. Um, well, again, women of color will be the majority of women in the United States. We are some of the fastest growing groups of entrepreneurs, college graduates. You know, we're very ambitious. Um, and even with all of our ambitions, um, resources oftentimes still escape us. So Succeed Cowork is a, it's a shared workspace. It is not a new concept. It's a membership-based place where women, professionals, remote workers can come to work, share ideas, collaborate with one another, um, and become the leaders, entrepreneurs, and change agents that they desire to be. Okay, now, so if a person, and when you say a shared workspace, mm -hmm. now does that mean that a business can set up in that space? Yes. So you can, we have um, different tiers. You can have a, a business address. So if you have a small business, you need a business address that you can use on business cards or to get contracts, then you can use our space there. Um, if you need a place to meet your clients, you no longer have to go to Starbucks or hotel lobbies to do so. We have a beautiful conference room, Zoom and technological capabilities. Uh, we do not have private offices. We are a boutique space. Um, but we welcome anyone, all solo entrepreneurs and remote workers. If you're tired of working in your closet or at home, <laughs> come on down to succeed, co work. So you can have a desk and a computer and what have you Absolutely. in your space. Yes, sir. Operate, operate from there. Yes. Okay. Well, Andre, where is it located? We are located at 1302 Watson Boulevard in Warner Robins. We are the very first women of color. Uh, co-working space in Houston County. We do not have the, the, uh, the fortune to have an Office of Small Business Affairs as you all do. Um, so what we hope to do is to have offer um, amazing programming to take entrepreneurs from ideation to launch of their business um, and to also make sure that they are able to connect with resources to succeed. Yeah, now what should a person do if they want to know more about you <laughs> and more, more about those organizations in, in which you are involved. And of course, oh. so see co-working space. Yes. 
all they can learn more about my endeavors at fenikamiller.com. That is www.fenikamiller.com. And there are links to both the nonprofit and the co-working space there. If they just want information about the co-working space, they can visit succeedcowork.com um, and join our subscription list and then also learn um, about additional opportunities to join the space. Okay. What do you see yourself? What, dire what direction are you going in now, Miss Miller? I mean, you've been so involved in everything. And again, I want to congratulate you. And I want to very quickly say that uh, we're going to feature uh, businesses, African American businesses from the surrounding areas in the Black Pages this year. And you, of course, will be the one representing Houston County. And we're looking forward to not only featuring you, but your assistance in greater outreach in that area. And I really appreciate your agreeing, agreeing to do that. So where are you going? Where are you headed now, Fanika? So oh, it is my honor. We're going to get this business launched. We are going to get all of our Black businesses and particularly businesses of color, entrepreneurs listed in the Make a Middle Georgia Black pages. I just today accepted the position as Senior State Coordinator for Black Voters Matter. And so I look forward to continuing to flesh out and to build with our partners in 50 counties across the state in addition to um, work and succeed. Well, again, I wanna say congratulations to you. And uh, you wanna give a shout out, I know, to your family. You know, who, and your, who was that, your uncle or your dad are driving that bus? <laughs> That was so Santa. That was my dad. I was so <laughs> spoiled. I, I've had, you know, uh, my safety ambassador and my dad traveling with me over the last eight months. And I didn't have to drive and, you know, type, answer phones. But I'm so grateful for them, in addition to my husband and my children, who um, over the past two and a half decades have really been very supportive of all of the community work that we've done. Well, we're so happy to have interviewed Ms. Fanika Miller, and she's got so many titles and she's done so much. And if you want to learn more about her, go to FanikaMiller.com and learn more about it. And I want to just publicly congratulate her again. And, you know, not only for what she has done previously with voting and Black Voters Matter, but also on her new position as a what now? Senior State Coordinator Senior for Black State Voters Matter. And also as the owner of Succeed Cohort. So thank you, girl. Thank you for <laughs> all you do and all you've done. And you've meant so much to the community. And just like the old saying, the proof is in the pudding. Hey, thank you, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> and the pudding tastes mighty good right now. So we want to thank you. Keep up the good work. God speed to you. And we will see you on the rebound, which will be very soon because we need to talk about the Black Pages. This yes, is a call to action. I'm your host, Alex Habersham, having interviewed Ms. Fanika Miller of from FanikaMiller.com if you want to know more about us. And uh, we appreciate your attention to this interview. And then, you know, heed what she says about being involved, being involved civically, understanding the importance and the meaning of the economic getting involved in the community, and going to vote. This is a call to action. I'm your host, Alex Habersham. Have a great day.